Sandy Monroe is back to talk about the biggest takeaway from the Tesla battery day, the $25,000 Tesla. And we're going to start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If you are interested in everything that's going on in the world of electric cars and you want to catch Sandy with his awesome monthly segment on this channel, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, so this is a part two of our bigger conversation that we had right after the battery day. The part one was already posted on this channel, but this time we talk specifically about the most affordable Tesla that will be made in about three years and why the road to the most affordable Tesla lies through the most expensive Tesla, which is the Plaid Model S. And Sandy will also explain to me why can't we have it right now? Why can't we have the $25,000 Tesla right now and have to wait for three more years? We'll get to all of this, but before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by our newest sponsor, which I'm really excited to have, which is the Neo Charge. Do you already have a 240 volt outlet but want to charge two electric cars or maybe split it between a car and an appliance without spending the tons of money on an electrician? Well, check out Neo Charge, your plug and play solution. Get one today and use the discount code in the description of this video. And by Climate Exchange, that's right, the Tesla raffle is back. You can win a Tesla of your choice. Only 4,000 tickets will be sold, so make sure to get yours using the link in the description of this video. And even if you don't win, the money will go towards a great environmental cause. All right, so let me talk about something that I was excited to hear uh, from Elon, but also a little confused and maybe also disappointed, something that I thought Tesla was going to come up with much sooner than this but we're talking about a $25,000 hatchback Tesla and Elon said that they're starting to work on it and it's going to take about three years uh, because you know they need to get to mass production with uh, with this battery technology um, you know first let's uh, let's talk about how fast this new battery technology can actually hit mass production because obviously they are saying that the Plaid mode Model S will have these batteries, obviously because of the range. Uh, and um, so how fast do you think that they can finish the technology when it's ready to be actually mass produced? And then how difficult or easy it is to scale it to hundreds of thousands uh, of cars being produced with that technology in a year? Okay, so uh, as far as the Plaid is concerned, um, there's very few people that reach in their pocket and pull out a 200 grand and say, I'd like one of those. Could I have a blue one? Um, so that's, that's going to that's gonna be a slow ramp and it's going to be something where limited, limited amounts of production. And I think that that's where he's going to, uh, and that's where I think he's going to perfect this thing. So uh, I believe that, I believe he's probably got production that he can, he did say, he said, I have production I can make right now, but I don't like the scrap rate. Okay, uh, when you get, and he also said, uh, a prototype is a piece of cake, but manufa real manuf scaled manufacturing is really tough. Okay, those are two key indicators as to what's going on. He already knows that he's made prototypes. What he wants to do now is make sure that he's got scaled production. That means that he's already working on scaled production. Again, he, Tesla, Elon Musk is very good at, at telling people a little bit, uh, but, but not enough. And, uh, and that's kind of like where things are a problem for most people that were listening to him. I'll, I'll tell you two things about what I thought on Tesla Day. Number one, I, I thought that um, I thought that he was being reserved simply because of the um, what's his name there the Nikola guy that's going to jail or I don't know what's going on Trevor Milton yeah he's got issues so over promising and under delivering is kind of like that guy's hallmark but Tesla doesn't do it that way so he's under promising and over delivering and that's kind of like what he wants to do so I think that. I think that we should take that into account. 
he was being very cautious, very measured about what he was going to talk about and, and how far he was going to go. So everybody looks at him and says, oh, that guy, he, he never delivers on time. So he's going to try and speed it up, just like he did with the, um, just like he did with the, uh, uh, the, the, the castings and whatnot. Second thing is, um, I, think that, I think that he's probably already at some sort of a scale that's uh, good enough to, uh, to start trying it out in mules, like uh, cars that won't be sold, they're just for testing the product. I think he's already got, he's got, a, he's already got to that mule stage. And I believe that the uh, little, um, the little uh, product uh, development area that he's got, the little fa uh, laboratory, I think they call it um, uh, Cato, uh, Cato Road or something like that. That thing is probably already going balls to the wall to try and push these, car these uh, batteries out already. I think they're there, but I don't think he wanted to tell anybody. He didn't want to, he didn't want to have any controversy. So he got the stock went down. It'll go back up. Yeah. All right. Now, so wh when do you think this can be scaled? I mean, I understand this. He's probably ahead of what he is, might be saying. Um, you know, but you know, to create. I mean, obviously, they said the factory that produces these batteries doesn't even need to be close to the size of a you know a, a, right. a battery factory that everybody else got, including them with Panasonic. Uh, but how fast can you build one that actually can put these batteries on all Teslas that are in production at that moment? Are we looking at two, three, four years? Okay, so I think that if he has this uh, this uh, dry wetting uh, uh, for for the uh, for the product, so he doesn't have to go through and reclaim the uh, solvents that normally would put on the uh, the, the lithium and went on. I think that if he's truly got that, if that's truly working, then he could probably scale up to what the volume that he needs for the plaid. I think he could probably do that in about a year. And remember, remember, I've been right a lot. I've been right. That's a why lot. we have you here. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's okay, why we so have you here. I think I think yeah, I think that in about a year he'd be up to scale at least to cover the plaid. To do something for 25 grand, um, I think uh, he said he's going to get the car out in a year. So, how long does it take a normal OEM in North America to get a car out? From the time that they say we should have a car till the time that you make the first sale, job one, um, you're probably looking at five years, 60 months. Everybody will tell you different rates, but there's a lot of things you have to do. There's clinics, there's styling, there's specs and, and, uh, and trying to project what's going to happen when you get it to market and whatnot. They like to call that either bubble up or phase zero and they don't want to count that. But that is part of getting the job done. Um, I think that Tesla does things differently and I think they'll be done in three years because look how fast they kicked out the, uh, the Model Y from the Model 3. So I believe that it, it won't take them that long. Three years to make a whole car why would it take me three years to uh, to generate basically a battery factory? I don't, I don't think. I think in a year he'll be ready to go. All right, but what about to power, let's say, all of the Teslas, all of the models with this new battery tech? I mean, he even said that they're going to have to continue not only you know get the CATL yeah. and and Panasonic batteries, they will have to increase that until they can meet their right. own demand. When do you think that can realistically happen? When they're just providing and making their own batteries for all of the cars they're making? That is going to take a bit. And, uh, and I think that if, um, if they can get to a point where they can make enough of these, I think that what they're going to do is uh, upsell the battery pack and say, okay, you can get this one as normal or you can get this one, but you're going to have to pay more money. And that's kind of like how you blend it in. And it's like how they brought in automatic transmissions and air conditioning and everything else that's ever been in implemented into a car. It starts out as a luxury and then it becomes commonplace at the end. But I, I think that for him, um, he, would have to get, he would have to get either that little plant, the, um, the Cato plant, he'd either have to get that up to, um, 
a phenomenal speed, or he's going to have to build another couple of small plants or one big plant that can really push this stuff out the door. Then he could shut down the, the, the Nevada plant, the Gigafactory, whatever, shut that down, convert it, plug in who knows how many lines. Because now that they're smaller, he'll have his, uh, he needs 60 months usually, that everybody wants 60 months before you scrap out your, um, uh, your investment. So for him, he's got a lot of money sitting in the bank. He could scrap all that stuff out, put in the new equipment that he needs for making uh, these batteries, and then uh, and basically abandon these. So I think that's what's going to happen. Now, humor me with something here, and, and bear with me for a second, because I am wondering, why can't we have the $25,000 Tesla now? Because, like, I'm, I'm thinking this. Uh, you can kick half of the batteries uh, cells out of the pack and make it 200 mile range, which is more, that's fine for smaller uh, for a smaller car. You make it hatchback. You don't have to worry about two extra doors. You kick out all the toys like you know the autopilot and and all of that stuff. You know, yeah. and on top of that, you don't make 25 percent profit margin on the entry level car. You go down to 10, which is still pretty good, and boom. You have a $25,000 car. Where am I wrong? Um, this is a capitalist country. <laughs> and making money is extremely important. I've heard. Uh, so uh, I don't think I would do that. I, if I was in Elon's shoes, I would say, I'll make a car that I'm going to sell for $25,000, and I'm going to make a shitload of money on it. I am a capitalist as well. I mean, just go to the bank and say, hey, I, I can't make a payment this month. Uh, Let's be friends, and, and you just forget about it, and that doesn't happen. Well, I don't mean lose money, but, you know, most manufacturers At don't 10%. make that much money on their entry-level cars, definitely not 25%. Yeah, I know. Right, and that's why everybody's abandoning ship. How many entry-level cars does Ford have? I don't know. How about GM? Yeah, there's virtually none. Everybody's getting out of that business. They want to go to something where they can make money. Pick up trucks. Uh, uh, SUVs, uh, luxury vehicles. Um, Ford does have some smaller vehicles that they, they pedal, but for the most part, they don't want to do it. GM doesn't want to do it. BMW doesn't want to, nobody wants to do it. Everybody wants to get into something where they can make their shareholders happy because at the end of the day, that's, what's, that's the reason for a company, uh, to make money for shareholders. And that's kind of like what he's doing. and. Uh, I think that's why, that's why, um, that's why he's, his shareholders, uh, uh, I mean, they, they, they definitely made him happy. They gave him everything that he wanted and then some. I think, I think it's still the best buy on the marketplace. I don't care if it's at three, 300 bucks or something. It's still, still a lot of money. Okay, so let's forget about the, you know, smashing the profits down. But what if we really do that? Like, what if you would take out half of the batteries and make a shorter range to, you know, 200 miles, uh, you know, and obviously it's a smaller hatchback, so not as much door stuff and take out of the autopilot stuff. Do you think he can make a um, $25,000 car right now still with profits, maybe 30000 Like, what? how much savings would that give him? if he kicks out all, all of the toys and the long range and stuff. All right, so right now, the only way that I know of how to make a, um, uh, a $25,000 car is to go to a three-wheel auto cycle. And that's kind of like what we're doing for a couple of people, okay? So I have one for Nobe, I've talked about it. We're working with Archimoto. They're doing it in a different way. And then there's another one coming up called Bricklin. And, um, and those, those products will be able to be sold in and around that kind of a number. But uh, I got rid of a wheel, I got rid of a motor, I got rid of a whole bunch of stuff. It's a two-seater. I don't have to put in a whole bunch of safety stuff. I don't have to have, there's a lot of things that, uh, that happen when you go to three wheels as opposed to four. Um, it, that's why I'm, I'm working on this. Plus, who's gonna buy it? Like I worked on the uh, I worked on the Nano for for um, Tata in India. We came up with a car that was less than one lek, so a thousand 
thousand uh, rupees and um, and or two thousand rupees, and this was supposed to get people off motorcycles and into cars where they could be sheltered and stuff like that, and it turned out to be a giant flop. It was a giant flop because people didn't want it. They didn't they didn't want that. They they wanted something that was going to be more glamorous, more luxurious. They didn't want a no frills car, so. I don't know uh, who's trying to talk him into it, but I think he really should do a lot of work where it comes to uh, customer clinics and things like that because that's where, that's where you find out who's going to buy it. And I, I don't know how many people are going to be wanting to buy that car if they can buy something that's uh, probably a whole lot cheaper and a lot more fun. Like Arky Moto, that's a fun car, I'm tell or a fun cycle. Um, they you can drive it almost anywhere. It's a uh, it's a great uh, a great thing, and and it and it's right now it's at 20 grand, but it'll it'll drop in price after we get done ramping it. I'm sure. So that's that's kind of like where you want to be. But you you want to have you got to make money at these things. Uh, it won't make your shareholders happy, and you'll turn into you'll turn into the normal OEMs if you don't if you don't. If you don't make money at things. All right. So if I want a cheaper car from Tesla, I'm either gonna they're either gonna lose profits or I'm gonna lose a wheel. All right. I, I fair enough. Yeah. It was just a bit of a fantasy that I had. Well, no, no that's why that's why I want to buy their parts. I I don't I know they're not gonna want to go into the three wheel business. There's other things that they aren't gonna want to do. It's not their it's not it's not in their prototype. But but the three wheel cars that I'm working on, they will be something I'm hoping that'll be filled up with. Tesla parts, um, and so they sell parts and they make money on that, and they don't have to get into uh, uh, an industry that might change depending on the whims of some politicians. So, last question for you. Uh, now that okay. you know what uh, Tesla has up their sleeves, uh, and you know um, you already know what the rest of the um, uh, automotive industry has with uh, Panasonic, LG Chem, and so forth, other battery cell manufacturers. Mm -hmm. How many years ahead do you believe Tesla is now? Granted that obviously others are not sitting on their hands and just watching Tesla enjoy this. Um, one, two, three, five years? Um, it depends on what you're talking about. Battery cell um, technology. Okay, battery cell technology, I think they're five years ahead. If we're looking at this kind of stuff, like the, um, the circuit boards and whatnot, uh, 10 years. If we're looking at motor technology, uh, three, three to five years. If we're looking at um, integrated systems, I think um, another five years, five years ahead of everybody else. All right. Well, I am. Uh, I know this is probably one of the last events we're going to talk about because they don't have that much going on in the next year or so. But uh, I'm sure we'll talk about this one a few more times. So. Thank you so much once again for I dumbing know. things up for me at the very least. <laughs> um, you know, I know a few of my viewers enjoy that as well. So, and um, I will see you next month. All right. Don't forget that Sandy is here on this channel every month. So don't forget to subscribe. And he is also looking for investor partners in one of his upcoming projects. I can't tell you what it is, but he can. So contact him directly. I put a link to his website in the description of this video of course don't forget to watch the part one of our bigger conversation that we had right after the battery day that link is in the description of this video but if you're watching it on youtube it should be right there looking forward to all of your comments other than that see you guys next time and remember to stay charged